Everybody, three to one battles in there. You go with a sticky knife, you want to you put the puck in the net. Everybody's got to get going, you got to get talking. Simple, fast, popular. Good to have everybody here. Like I'm having the best summer of my life this year because I got to stay at home and I knew I wasn't leaving again in July to go back and I got to spend the whole summer of my life. Do you know what I mean? So I understand you guys leaving and my daughter as well, I don't forget her. And you guys leaving to come back, I don't know how hard it is, but I think you're coming to a great place. They're trying to create an environment that is no excuse environment, you know, so we can just do our jobs and get on with it. And I think that's a really good thing. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't happen everywhere. It's the first day of camp in Cardiff ahead of what the team hope will be a successful season. A new logo, a new set of players, and a new coach in Pete Russell will be tasked with bringing stability to the Cardiff Devils, as well as silverware. I demand a lot of practice, so if we come to the ring, we're going to practice. You know, if we don't come to the ring, it's a day off. But if we come to the ring, there'll never be a day that there's nothing happening. I just, I think it's important if you go on the ice, you just go for it and you play. Day one of camp is also a chance for Cardiff Devils managing director Todd Kelvin to address his team for the first time. From my point of view and from, from the organization point of view, what if we can speed that up? What if we can get rid of that period where it takes like three weeks to adjust? What if we can get one more win? What if we can get two more wins? What if it means that there's less injuries because guys have been skating longer and we work through all the kinks in that four week period of training camp? Well, what if that gives us a, a bit of an advantage? And I think it does. And, and that's why four weeks from now, when we start the league play, we'll be flying. And all these other teams will be sitting there going, oh, I'm still waiting for my Wi-Fi. I don't know, I, I know we lost that game, but like, my, I didn't have my skates in time. You won't believe this, but I got the wrong side, or I got the wrong way uh, sticks. Like all these issues that have happened. I talked to Pete at length about this, and we both wanted a really long preseason, just because, I mean, you know, four weeks of preseason sounds like a lot, but like, I mean, if you look at teams around Europe, they, they do a longer preseason. They might not play as many games, but for us, you know, we want to play games because we wanted guys to get used to the system, get used to their new lineups. We got not a lot of new faces in the lineup this year. We also have a new coach. And I think now that the season's going to get going, I feel like we've gotten past the point of getting to know each other all and, and them getting to know Pete as a coach and getting to know the systems and their line mates. <laughs> Meetings over, equipment prepared, the team head out to the ice for the first time. Here we go, Black. Go film this, isn't that interesting? I'm gonna go. I blame Merge for this. It's too sharp. Despite the jet lag, the first practice doesn't hold back. For new players, it's a chance to make a strong first impression. Preseason's been great so far. You know, before coming here, I definitely heard a lot of good things about Cardiff, and I think it's lived up to the to the reputation for sure. I'm pretty impressed with the hockey here. Um, I think there's a lot of good players who signed in this league. You know, it's not as big of an adjustment where everything is English. Uh, that's been that's been really nice. So I think uh, I think I've been adjusting well, and I'm uh, yeah, I've, I've been loving it here so far. For younger players like Bailey Harewood, it's also a chance to get the coach's eyes on you for the future. Well, it's good to get minutes at this level, um, playing obviously Elite League is somewhere I want to be in the future, so it's good to start now. To have a coach like that and a guy that gets behind you and obviously is somewhere in the national team where I'd like to play at, at some point is um, good for both sides for me. Oh, there's no easing into things for the Devils who have just five days on the ice before their first preseason games against the Belfast Giants. After a long week and a quick trip across the Irish Sea, the Devils take to the ice in Belfast to play the defending champions. All these new players, 13 for Belfast, eight 
for the Cardiff Devils. We've it doesn't take long for the Devils to get going. A mix-up by the Giants allows Chad Pechenero a chance to get the team on the board early. Miscommunication, now it gets away front. Chatters, has a goal for the Cardiff Devils. The two sides share a fierce recent rivalry, and it doesn't take long before tempers start to flare. Mark Cooper not having any of that. This is righty front and Mark Cooper right in front of the Devils bench. Or right from Grant. Mark Cooper standing up for Sato. Cooper gets the right arm free. Couple of punches being thrown in. Mark Cooper with a few extra inches. And height here on Grant. Grant well with a tough cookie. Mark Cooper in a headlock. And that's a pretty spurted fight to start the season off. After conceding one, the Devils reply as Bailey Harewood makes his time with the team in preseason count. Sato now stepping up on Crawford to finish it. There's a chance here. Bring him into the zone. Oh, what a finish. That's a great finish. A screen coming across the front there. The two sides traded goals and fists, ending regulation tied at three. And after a lengthy shootout, a Marcus Crawford goal made sure the Devils took the win in their opening game of preseason action. This time for the Devils. Rouge around the arena. He's using the whole rink here as he steps into the wall. Oh, that's a great finish by Marcus Crawford and Furness. The Devils win 4-3 in the shootout. A quick journey home and the Devils welcome back their home fans for the first time this season. Buzzing after the win the night before, the Devils will look to give the home crowd something to cheer about. Yeah, how's it going? Good. Despite all the excitement though, it's the visitors who enjoy a spell of early success, scoring three times in the opening six minutes. In, folks. Here we go, finally. Sydney's can start lane. Lays it off to Cooper, hits the disc, oh, moving forward, he scores! Another chance for Jack Backdoor, what a save and a goal! It's coming in. Oh, the blue line and a goal! Just over five minutes played, a third up. Cardiff do manage to respond though through Joey Martin, but the first 20 minute display means a tough team talk awaits, even in pre-season. You've got to be ready. You've got to do things fast and get in those situations and hard. And I think it was too loose today. It's got to be stronger. It's too lackadaisical. You can't take three and four penalties in one period. It's cheap. Do you understand? It's cheap. I'm expecting more this period. A lot more. You've got to zone in a little bit and play. Everybody, play to win battles in there. You go with a stickiness and you want to put the puck in the net. You got to you want to execute everywhere. Everybody's got to get going and got to get talking. Simple, fast hockey. Lose the bad habits quick, boys. But we're in our own rank and we got to show a lot more. A lot more. Do you understand? Yep. Let's go. Coaches talk over. The Devils come out much improved for the second. With the tempo and physicality raised, the Devils found three unanswered goals of their own through Justin Crandall, Paul Sanford, and Ryan Barrow. Gets a couple of lefts off, a couple of rabbit punches. Batch using his strength. A late strike by the Giants would send the game to overtime for a second straight night, but this time the Devils didn't let it go all the way to a shootout. from two there's reason for optimism but coach Pete Russell has a secret plan for the team in the upcoming week. Are you gonna come back here and there's an education meeting we're gonna call it. It's not no. it's the first part of something special. Alright it's a good thing and it'll all build towards a special present I've got for you soon. You might love me after the special present or you'll hate me even more alright but it's gonna be fun and it's gonna see who the men are and who are not. And it's going to make you stronger as an individual and as a team. 
I promise you. So we've got some people here today. They'll explain more. You know, as is the first phase of two phases. So they're gonna come in. Come on in. Be good, don't be nervous. Chris is a nice guy. How do you achieve that flow state? How do you get into that zone? Can you mechanically put yourself in that place so you operate at a higher level? Right, now we would suggest using some of the protocols we're gonna teach you today, why that you can. But why it's really important is because you're going to apply it next week when you come to a facility where we will host you. All right, next week when you come to that facility, you will apply the protocols that we're going to teach you this morning to allow you to cope with the stress that we're going to put you under next week. I will say no more. Sounds good, don't it? So I told you it's a nice present. Is it all right? Just on next week, lads, obviously you're coming up to us, okay? When you do get to the car park, Please stay in the cars, don't get out of the cars. So and just in terms of kit, make sure you wear stuff for moving. You don't mind getting uh, getting wet. Getting wet. Oh. Oh. There it is. Yes. Yes. Yeah, happy mate. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. Step out of the fire, like step on a landmine. <laughs> Good morning gents, Good morning. Good morning. welcome to the Green Mile training camp. Obviously since you've been up here you've all been on Google, you've all been on Instagram and trying to have a look about what you're, uh, what you're going to do today. No. Well, you can have a look on Instagram, you can have a look on Google, but what you're going to do today you won't find. Rocky, muddy, all right, grassy, everything, all the above. All right, you need to make sure that you stay sharp for the duration of today. You make sure you look where you're placing your feet, all right, don't just switch off. Like I said, if you wanted to end, Work hard. That's the name of the game. All right, boys. Who's heard of the phrase "train hard, fight easy"? Train hard, play easy. Yeah, military phrase. Okay. We train harder than any game. We train harder than any battle. We train harder than anything that life is going to throw you. Okay. So therefore, when it throws it at you, you find it easy. Each man, led by the captain, okay, will step on the side cross his arms, he will jump in, fully submerge, he will swim to the end and he will step out the other end and fall back in where you are. Stay under until you hit that wall, boys. You've got plenty of oxygen. Land on your feet, boys. Okay, good. All it is is a stimulus, it's a sensory stimulus. The cold makes you want to perform in a certain way, makes you want to react in a certain way. Happy with that? Okay, we're now going to grab our water bottles, back on the track, facing up the hill. It was a long day. Obviously, um, I think we were there, what, half nine till half four, or finished around four o'clock or something like that, and had a cheeky Nando's after, but no, it was good, and I think it's good. You can see the mental toughness that guys have. I mean, um, that early on in pre-season, everyone's begged from the week before the games, and you come back in and do that kind of training and um, you put yourself through those uh, those like extreme exercises and things like that but it, it was good to get the group together and obviously they were all exercises were designed to really put you through really stress you out but you were doing it with everyone so you all you were all in it together just like when you when we're on the ice that was a pretty tough day um, it was a hard day De definitely haven't had many team builders like that before but uh, you know afterwards it was a pretty good feeling looking around uh, everybody you know went in with a great attitude worked hard you know nobody complained so you kind of knew we had a pretty special group a couple of laps out of you boys this. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Feet first, going backwards, so we spin 180. Good, on your feet up. This way, let's go. Aggression is the one thing, like Chris said, that will get you up this hill fast. Okay, aggression is what you want to get that log up here.
Wait, Donald. Ah. Loads of oxygen in the system. Woo! Yeah. Okay, mate. Okay. Let's go, lads. Let's go. Okay, rules of the game boys. Okay, it's below <coughs> the shoulders. There's no striking, there's no gouging, there's no poking. Okay, the objective is to pin your opponent onto his back. Bob's got that hurry yeah, yeah, Bob's got that in. Keep him in the Bob, ring, Bob. boys. Keep him in the ring. Good boys, thanks, boys. Lads, leverage. Leverage, where is it? Who's got it? Oh, yeah, Dougie. Of course. Okay, let's go. I'm one seven. Just one guy. Everyone? You know, having experience and doing similar training in that aspect uh, benefited me for sure. You know, it was still hard. It was still something that, you know, a lot of things that I haven't done before. But I think the mindset of being able to just push through when you're in an uncomfortable situation was something that I took from, uh, you know, my training in the military. Okay, you will set off in your teams. Okay, starting at the bottom of long drag. Okay, so it's a race against the clock. So you will not know whether you won, okay, until we announce it later. Freeze! Stand by. Go. Let's go, boys. Hey, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I got back. Right on the left. Let's go. Someone take this. Someone take this order. Come on, Come on. 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 It was uh, a learning experience, you know, for a lot of guys. There was, it's not something you do every single day. So I think, uh, you know, a lot of the guys were there and we embraced it. We, uh, it, we took it as a good challenge. Uh, we had fun with it, which was a big thing. But, you know, it was super challenging. When we were done with it, you felt very rewarded. And uh, it was good to accomplish that. So, in third place, Team 3, Josh team, 4604. That's brilliant, boys. Okay. Brilliant, boys. Marty, what? Oh, <laughs> second place. Oh, Loser. My team. Oh. 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 My team, okay, 44, 58. Winning team, Craig's team, 44, 19. Oh. Oh. Didn't seem like three quarters of an hour of that. Okay, fly, fly. From my side, okay, Craig, Josh, all right, hoofing after that, boys. Absolutely tip top, okay, you all showed up today. Like we said at the beginning, we've seen dozens and dozens of teams from the top to the bottom, all right. 
and a lot of them, even the elite teams, show up just absolutely bunk at you from, from day dot. Too good for it, much better than it, okay? Too proud and all the rest of it. You ask them to do something, they've done it all before, so they think, and then we just turn it up again, and we turn it up again. Nothing else to say, but thank you. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I think the best part about it, honestly, was probably afterwards, you know, for the for probably two or three days after. That's kind of all we talked about in the room and stuff. So it was definitely a good team builder. Um, you know, and when you're like running through, running through rivers and mud and all that stuff, you kind of do find an extra gear. So that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it was a, definitely a really good team builder. I was arguing with him, like we did a, it's a hundred and he goes, Just shut up and do them. Yeah, it's like you guys have four more sets. I don't like that feeling when you're panicking. Like, no. Oh, 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 oh. I don't like that at all. Not even a little bit. Like, I, I, it, may, it may confirmed my fears of like drowning to death or yeah, suffocating no, with like, it's got, it's got to be one of the worst ways to go out. I heard it's one of the best. Yeah. <laughs> The buzz from the day before is still flowing, but it's time for serious stuff now, as the team leaders set out the rules for the year. All right, boys, okay. So we're just gonna go over some of our team rules and fine list. Um, the fine list, we don't need to go over every fine. They're pretty standard. I'm sure you guys have seen them all year to year. We're not gonna be a team that like, we don't look for fines. We're kind of a more help each other out. Obviously, if you're late, it's gonna be a fine though, but big rules are like, help each other out. If a guy's leaving his towel around, like. Maybe pick it up for him the first time, but if it gets to be like a few times, you know, obviously it might be a fine. Always shower before treatment and always shower before getting in the cold and hot tubs. I think that goes without saying. Firstly, boys, um, just want to say, like, honored to be your captain this year. Um, I'm very lucky, like, obviously, I had Dougie, Marty, Coxie last year help me out a ton. Um, kind of the last two years, like, just to touch on that, it was tough, like, it was kind of you were kind of having to go between with the coaches, the players like Todd, meetings, meetings all the time. I don't think we're going to have that problem this year from what I've seen so far, like not just yesterday, but the, the whole time we've been here so far, including like this morning, you know, after a tough day yesterday, everyone just coming in, getting done. So i um, really looking forward to to the season that way. I think like we had a, we've had like conversations through the summer and since camp started and I, I just think one thing we, we all want to touch on as well is just like we need to keep this vibe going boys because like we've got a real good group you can sense it I think everyone knows that we have fun together we've put in a lot of work these first couple of weeks and Coxie made a great point last year I was speaking to him in the summer um, of like it gets to those you know January February days and it's you're on the bus to, to manch and it is tough it's like the dog days of the year right but that I think Marty put it perfectly. Those days, uh, someone who works in the office nine to five, that's their best day, right? You're on the bus with your buddies, you're having fun, you're playing a game for a living. And I think we just need to remind <coughs> that. You know, we're all guilty of it at times. You know, you can come to the rink, you're low energy, you're on the bus, you're like, oh, here we go again. But if you see that, do your best to pick up your, your buddy and, and, and just let's keep that good feeling alive, I think. That's all I've got to add because uh, honestly, it's not. I don't think it's going to be a problem because what we've had the first three weeks has been outstanding, and that's like for the new guys coming in, for everyone coming back who's had frust we've had frustrations the last couple of years. I think we're just thriving in this like dog environment right now. So I think we just got to keep that up, new dogs. Dog. 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 <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's 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 the only thing I've got to add. Winning the league is a grind and it's, it takes consistency and I think on a weekend we'll play home Belfast. We're going to get up for that game. That's not what we're worried about. It's then turning around Sunday, the back to back, going to Fife and bringing our A game as well because at the end of the day, it's both, all these games, are, they're all worth two points. So that game is just as important as a Belfast home game. So it's, it's about every day, every game, we got to bring our best and if we're a little flat, it's not waiting for one guy to, to do something. We all got to give a little bit more. I think Pete's kind of mentioned that, and that's so important because we want to win this league this year, and we're going to need to do that. So I think that's pretty important to remember. For sure. I think just lastly, I think since I've been here anyways, it's never really been like, oh, you're a rookie. You got to do all this, like all of the rookie duties. I mean, if you look after a road trip, Rich is always the one unloading the stick bag. So just help out. Um, wherever you can and yeah.
I literally was walking through Pinar to put my hand on the window in there to see if the boys were in there doing one of these. Sure, we were there. Yeah, we were in there. I, I, I went to like three. I, I was in there at three. So he's like, sweet potato pot is guilty. <laughs> While the players recap their lunch plans, Fans are heading to Vindico Arena for the team's annual open training session. The reason why we love doing like the opening tra open training session is I think our fans are starved for hockey at that point, right? Uh, and so we, we want to do it so they can kind of see, because they, they're itching to see this, the team. Um, so they played a couple games and then people kind of recognize them. And then, we, and then we do the open training session. And for me, the best part of the, about the opening training session is just seeing how excited everyone is to see the new players, particularly the kids. Like the kids, it's it's just so funny how quickly kids find their favorite player, right? You know, like I remember walking in and say, talking to a kid and I said, "Who's your favorite player?" And they said, "River Rimshot." Right? River. They've known they've known who he is for a week, but it's just great. He just he just probably saw River. He loved him right away. Maybe he did something in the game that he really liked. Maybe they just like because he's got a cool name. Maybe the best hockey name ever. It's just so cool to see people, you know, like like almost like falling in love with the new team, you know, which is great. And and we have. We have such a good fan base. We have such a, a passionate fan base. It's so good to see so many people turn out for that. It's not just a chance to see the team practice, but for the fans, it's also a chance to get to hear from their new head coach for the first time. How about a big round of applause for our new head coach, Pete Russell? It's good to come back somewhere where people speak English. That's the first thing. <laughs> <laughs> you, you go in a bar or a restaurant and you can get and listen to other people instead of guessing everything. But. The open training session is also an opportunity to hear from new players as well as fan favourites from last year. How are you feeling? I feel good. Um, you know, full of energy, ready to go. Excited for the season. And can't wait to see what's come. While the players sign autographs, Pete Russell uses his time to put a player on the spot. I'm going to talk to everyone and just keep talking. If they don't listen, I'm going to come to your office and I'm going to keep talking and I'm going to talk. If you're not listening, I'm going to talk to the walls and the doors and I'm going to keep talking. So Evan. Yeah, I had a, I had a feeling he was going to do that. Um, it's not just fans that get hosted at the arena, as the team also welcomes sponsors for an evening, while also hosting the families of the team to a team bonding exercise as well, where in groups they have to come up with a themed night. <laughs> team energy, enthusiasm, teamwork, and whether it's realistic, like if you say we're going to put beer in the water fountains, we're not doing that, okay? Yeah. So it has to. So Mosey, this night's going to make your night and talk, you're going to hate it, but it's going to make you a lot of money. What are you talking about, Barrel? We're talking about Fox and Pogs. What is Devil's Got Talent? We're going to create three different age brackets. It's going to be college slash university night. Our idea is parents appreciation night. <laughs> Away from team building, the games continued, and preseason ticked along nicely for the Devils. After their back-to-back -back wins over Belfast in the opening weekend, they followed this up in style against French side Amiens. Firstly, with a resounding 8-2 win before launching a come-from-behind win the following night. <laughs> Staying at home in week three, it was solid wins over the Glasgow clan with 4-2 and 6-2 scorelines respectively.
but it wasn't all smooth sailing as the final weekend of preseason showed. A trip up to Sheffield to play the Steelers, just the second away trip of preseason, saw the Devils look to continue their momentum, but were unable to do so. Chances came but couldn't be converted, and it was a lone goal beating goalie Ben Bowens that was the difference as the Steelers took a narrow 1-0 victory. Coming back home to close out preseason, the Devils were much improved, but with bodies missing through injury already, the Steelers had a chance at making it a double. A late goal in the first period gave the visitors the lead, but the Devils would fight back in the second. Ryan Barrow got on the board first with a power play strike, but would soon leave the game after a nasty hit by Steelers' Kevin Tancy that saw Grady Brandt stick up for his injured teammate. On the ensuing power play, the Devils took the lead, Cole Sanford ripping one past Matt Greenfield, whose mistake minutes later would give Jamie Arneal the Devils third. The lead wouldn't hold though as the Steelers struck twice in the third period before sealing the win in overtime. While preseason may not have ended the way the Devils hoped, the signs are there for a positive season ahead. A new group of players coming together, a new coach leading the way, and an excitement among the fan base, the Devils will look to start the regular season with a bang. Yo, yo, I swear that was... Yo, can I see out my one eye? My eyes watering, bro. I swear down, blood. I swear yo, down. I cannot see out my one eye. <laughs>